adequate um, whether there's you know um, a good enough investigation for the arbitrator to have what they need in order to uphold the discipline. So I do believe that uh, that is within the purview of the PCOC and would like to see that uh, uh, back in your uh, wheelhouse again. So uh, thank you. Bye. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bicking. Um, I will note just for your information and uh, the, the rest of the public, keen eye there, uh, it was simply due to logistics. Uh, we're trying to schedule a uh, time uh, to meet with someone who is m more of an expert on the arbitration side of things. Uh, it is off the agenda for today, but it, it's just tabled um, where we hope to go back to that conversation uh, when we have the speakers to do so. Glad to hear uh, that. Thank you. Um, are there any other members of the public who would wish to address this subcommittee? Remember to dial star six to unmute yourself. Seeing none, we will continue on with our agenda, um, starting with unfinished business items from our February meeting. Uh, the first uh, item number five, uh, no knock warrants, where we left off with um, no knock warrants. Uh, this subcommittee uh, reviewed high risk uh, warrant entry report prepared by Mr. Band. Um, and uh, I remember having in that conversation with Mr. Ban, if uh, I could take a look at the uh, the raw uh, individualized data, so that way um, I could uh, see if I could put together some uh, regression analysis for it. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to receive, I, I had not received that um, data from Mr. Band. Um, and I don't see him on the call unless uh, the unlabeled meeting guest is Mr. Band. Um, Christopher, are you here? Uh, yes, Ms. Meany. Hi, I'm a member of the public. Uh, bear with us one minute, ma'am. Um, uh, Carolina Mini, do you have uh, uh, something to say regarding uh, the no knock warrants? Uh, yes, Commissioner. It was just that um, the in investigator ban had a family emergency and he will be yeah. out until April. So that is why you have not uh, received anything yet. Gotcha. But well. at the next meeting, we will have something prepared for you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And my best wishes go out to Christopher and his family. I hope everything's all right. Um, okay, uh, with that in mind, uh, that was really the next step in this. You know, we got summary data from from Christopher's um, analysis of this, and we wanted to see if we could uh, make some hypotheses about that. But if I don't have the data, I can't do any regression analysis. Um, do we have any other items uh, to discuss regarding coaching? Um, on that, because that was that was the point that I saw moving forward um, to see if we can build any you know statistical correlations between um, some of our outcomes that we were looking at and whether or not it was announced or unannounced. But um, any thoughts from either Commissioner Crockett or Commissioner Sparks on this? Uh, not, nothing on my end. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's not much to say. It's been very, very slow going um, yep. <clears throat> on this process. Continues to be slow going. The reasons for mm -hmm. that are varied. Yep. Um, OK, uh, we will definitely um, you know, make sure that when it is appropriate, we'll reach back out um, to Mr. Band and try to keep the ball rolling on that, because that was something we've been uh, seeing headway on um, successfully, and I want to keep that momentum up. Um, 
the next item um, for business, uh, unfinished business, is the item of coaching. Um, I do remember we um, had hit a, a particular wall with this one, um, and our end result was uh, that this subcommittee would work with um, Andrew Hawkins um, from Civil Rights Staff to put together a letter re recommending action um, on a new data management system. Um, from that previous conversation, Mr. Hawkins and Ms. Amini gave us kind of a, a more real world understanding of, you know, the, the lack of resources um, that we are able to receive from our current system. And um, the, the final nail in the coffin for us was, well, we can't even uh, pull the information that we need to pull to be able to uh, understand if there's a difference um, in outcomes in terms of using coaching, discipline, different levels of discipline, um, which also bleeds a little bit into our discipline research and study. Um, so, uh, Ms. Amini, I know you're, you, it looks like you're the member uh, from staff that's here. I don't mean to pick on you, but just because you are here, do you know if um, Mr. Hawkins has been able to work on a letter? I, I haven't seen any email from um, Andrew regarding this? Um, is that something that has been talked about at the staff level? Um, I don't believe so that he has worked on a, on a letter recommending a new RMS, but from what uh, we had discussed at the last meeting, we do have um, an RMS on its way. We were going to get in contact with their first available project manager, which I was told was the beginning of April. So hopefully within this week, if not next week, they will contact us with a contact person for that agency, mm -hmm. um, or excuse me, for that private company. And they, uh, we, we should be up and running hopefully soon. Okay. Um, on that note, I know this is, this is going to be an ask of, uh, of you. And I, I know that, um, you know, you would probably have to work with Andrew and others to see if this is okay. But uh, since we're in a public meeting right now, I, I would uh, politely ask if uh, either myself or another member of this audit subcommittee could be part of um, the conversations when speaking with that RMS um, liaison uh, to at least express PCOCs perspectives on what we would like to see um, in terms of searchable data, um, because that would be so wonderful to see. Um, and if I could at least put that that request out into the ether at your level um, and have that be a conversation that's, that's being had, I, I would greatly appreciate it. So to be specific, you want to be involved in terms of what uh, data points would be accessible through this RMS? And, and I think that this kind of bleeds into the other reason and probably the main reason why you're here is because I asked you last week to like uh, to give us kind of an update of what data points are public, what data points are not public. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a pretty heavy crossover with that. A new management system is going to have its own quirks, right? And, and I uh, I want to make sure that we're not fumbling the ball, so to speak, uh, with a new management system in terms of what this audit subcommittee and the PCOC needs. I'm sure because OPCR is is staff and and you guys have a lot of time to think about this, uh, that it is top of mind on the the priorities that you guys want. Um, but I also want to make sure that PCOC isn't forgotten about this because we are the outward facing entity of volunteers. And I want to make sure that we're able to, you know, uh, look into the types of data points that we've been asking about for a while. Sure. We'll do. Yeah. Thank you. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, in, in, sh you know, lacking Andrew Hawkins being here and having a further discussion regarding that letter um, recommending action. Um, 
I, I don't see further um, uh, further action items on the coaching discussion. I'll open it up to uh, Commissioners Crockett and Sparks. And if nothing, we can move on to our final action item. Well, <clears throat> it's kind of the same thing. There's not a lot to say when uh, uh, staff who have action items uh, don't attend the meeting. Um, and well, I will say I um, lack of uh, resources for uh, the Department of Civil Rights has been a, a constant issue and concern for this commission and uh, deeply disappointing to me. I know that generally that's not an individual issue, but yeah. it, it's hindered progress in almost every single avenue that we've tried to look at. And it's yeah. disappointing. I, I completely agree, um, Commissioner Sparks. And I, and I think that it's right to point out that this is not specifically the fault of any of the staff. The staff are doing the most with what they can. Um, and they have been under-resourced for a while now. Um, and boy, do I wish that, you know, this, if if PCOC could be a full-time job um, and that way I could be, you know, knocking on doors as, you know, as often and as long as uh, staff members like Ms. Amini um, could um, in her day job, uh, I, I'd be there. But, you know, we we have only so much time to give as as volunteers and there needs to be uh, even that much more support for the staff who support us. And it looks like they're not getting that support. So yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed as well. Um, well stated and I appreciate you clarifying that uh, none of that frustration is directed at any individual uh, mm -hmm. members of staff. We appreciate everybody who comes. I appreciate everybody who, who comes and talks to us. I, I just wish things were different. Yep. Um, uh, final item um, of business is discipline research and study. Um, in our last meeting, um, I requested uh, Ms. Amini um, to join us again at this meeting. Um, and talk uh, in more detail about um, data points uh, regarding uh, uh, what is public and not public information. Um, and it, it was a conversation that we had that closely aligns with the fact that our larger PCOC has summary data, uh, which we've just reimagined, right? Um, and we want to be able to play with that in a little bit more granular way here in the audit subcommittee. And knowing what is off limits and what is you know, within the bounds of what we're able to disclose to the public is, is important when we're talking about uh, whether or not we can evaluate whether or not certain violations of policies are treated similarly or dissimilarly across uh, the uh, discipline process. Um, and so with, with that in mind, um, Ms. Amini, uh, are you uh, able to speak to us in, in a little bit more detail today about uh, what are some of those, those variables? What are some of those uh, identifiers or uh, topics or, uh, you know, sometimes they're, they're codified and there's some sort of codes that are, are available to the public um, that we use either in, you know, those case summaries um, or that we haven't necessarily used in case summaries, but they're still publicly available information. Um, so that way we can start brainstorming with this idea of comparing, um, you know, uh, disciplines and comparing the process um, between one instance and another for a certain discipline. Sure. Um, so I will just kind of walk through my my thought process here. Um, from the last meeting, the first thing that came to mind was the public disciplinary decisions that are um, through the city of Minneapolis website. Mm -hmm. Have has the commission gone through the disciplinary decisions? And, and I guess for the public who's listening, I can kind of walk through where they are on the website. 
Yeah. If, if do you have a link for us so that way we could go straight to it and we can we could follow along with you? I do. I will put that in the chat right now. Thank you. So it's through the city of Minneapolis website. Uh, on the top, it would say resident services on the middle left. You would then go through public safety, police, public safety. And there is another link that would say police reports and data requests. And then towards the bottom, it's frequently requested police information and then disciplinary decisions. And then in that website, it has all of the disciplinary decisions I see some going back from 2017. There should be 2015s in here. Um, again, I also want to reiterate, this is not something that OPCR, norm, this is not what, what we post. This is mm -hmm. the records department, the front office, um, OPCR's involvement in these cases and with the review panels. Everything mm -hmm. after that is uh, other departments within the city. So they are tasked with putting this online. And in okay. those, in these cases, if you were to just uh, pick one, um, I'm looking at a 2019 case. It has uh, what, if there was a disciplinary decision in here, what that was, who the officer was, um, whether it was an A, B, C, or D, uh, if it was a suspension or a termination, or depending on, on each case, uh, that is listed in here as well. Um, it has, of course, redacted uh, administrative files in here. So all of sure. that information, I believe most of that was what was uh, requested from the last meeting. Uh, for the exception of some demographics in terms of officers' age and years of service. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the Minneapolis Records Department to uh, verify what exactly could be public. They had mentioned that the age of the officer is not public. Um, for officers' years of, years of service, you could check to see how long they have been um, employed with the city of Minneapolis. That could give uh, a general understanding of, of how long they may have been an officer. Um, and the other points that were mentioned, like, like uh, the grade of allegations, um, precinct, that is also public uh, on the precinct map that we have. Um, number of previous violations of officers that is also public and is currently uh, up in our OPCR website. We would be able to type in an officer's name and then see any of the cases that way. Um, I think that was that was what was remaining on that list. Mm -hmm. Um, so this, but again, this, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, please. No, finish, please. I was going to say that age is considered a, a demographic information. It's protected as private personnel data under 13 mm -hmm. da, or 13.43. So okay. that that's the only thing that, at least from the records department, that has that they inform me that we cannot release. And if there's any other questions in regards to that, I believe the best department to have that conversation is with the police records mm -hmm. uh, department. Okay, the, I mean this this sounds fairly promising because um, what what I'm hearing from you is we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven or twelve different data points, and and you're saying the only two that I'm hearing right now, um, the the race and ethnicity of the officer, and the age of the officer. Are the only two that are really kind of like not not disclosable if that's a word cannot be disclosed and the the rest of these seem like they are already public information it's just a matter of synthesizing it collecting it in a way that is meaningful for us mm -hmm, that's right um okay. those demographics could be handed out as summary data mm -hmm. uh, but it just can't be linked with a, any specific officer sure okay um and so we could we could ask, you know, you know, for summary data on age distribution of, hey, what, you know, give us a, a range of how many uh, officers are between, you know, 18 and 30, how many of them are between 30 and 40, 40 and 50, that sort of thing. But we don't want Officer X to be labeled as a 45 year old. 
I'm assuming that, yes. And okay. again, that would be um, a good question for the records department to, okay. to give you that final answer, yeah. Okay, good to know. Um, that's great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you looking into this for us um, because it helps us understand what's pragmatic and what's not um, in terms of going forward with this. And it sounds like the information's out there. Um, the one barrier to this is that it may not be in the most readable information. It seems like they're all in these these PDFs, which you know we talked about last time about how, man, this isn't necessarily digitally friendly, but that's a different kettle of fish. Uh, you know, it is possible to do. It's just, uh, you know, not necessarily pragmatic. Yes, that's right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and and from the website that you directed us to, the disciplinary decisions. Um, how far did you say this goes back to? I was just kind of scrolling through. I, I mentioned that I uh, I see some 2017 cases here, 2018. There's, you know, a lot of uh, files in here. I believe I saw one that was older than 2017. I have to, uh, the way 2016 it's, here that I see. The way it's coded is like parentheses 16 dash or 19 dash. That's supposed to signify the year. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like it goes back to 20. There, there are, there's one in 2016. Okay. Um, and none in 2022, none in 2021. Um, do you have any idea how often this is updated? Because it looks like it doesn't have any disciplines after 2020. I don't have an answer for you. I'm not sure. That's okay. I mean, I, I would have been surprised if you if you knew that. Um, but thank you for letting me ask the question anyway. Um, I I have no further questions um, for you, but I do see Commissioner Sparks has his hand raised. Hi, uh, Ms. Meany. Thanks for walking us through this. We appreciate the the assistance and the uh, the education. Um, I just want to make a point that when we um, talk about um, these sort of dashboards um, and we put links in in the uh, the chat, when this goes to YouTube later, um, I don't believe the Teams chat is viewable. Um, so that's a it's of limited use to the public. So and I know that this comes up every once in a while. I wanted to make sure that when we do this kind of thing, um, we come up with a, a way, a process in which those links and information about those websites is viewable to the public later. I don't know the best way to share that with people who are viewing this stuff after the fact, but I, I think it's important. That's that's a great aside. Um, and I was going to mention at the end of this um, that if Madam Clerk, if you could um, put this link into the meeting minutes, um, so that way anyone who at least goes to our meeting minutes can follow that link. Yes, Chair, I can absolutely do that. Thank you. Then, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any uh, further questions for Ms. Amini um, regarding her uh, reporting back to us about publicly available uh, data metrics that were of interest to us from either Commissioner Sparks or Crockett? Seeing none from Commissioner Sparks, none from Commissioner Crockett. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Amini. I appreciate you uh, chatting with us today. Um, Thank you. Uh, to jump more into next steps on this item, um, I think it uh, might be useful to um, start a discussion with the uh, records department at MPD um, and see if we can establish a, uh, you know, a connection of saying like, hey, we're we're interested in taking a look at data to uh, help. Uh, you know, understand the police department better. Um, it might be able to uh, foster a, an, a sense of goodwill of saying like, hey, we want to help you, uh, you know, synthesize this data uh, a little bit more and maybe we can get to uh, a common understanding, you know, not even just necessarily about, you know, discipline and records, but uh, maybe this will help us come to a better understanding of our entire police department overall um, and what that sort of makeup looks like and 
Uh, I know they're curious about that sort of stuff. I'm sure they've done work on some of this already. And, uh, you know, I, I know that this would be a helpful uh, way to establish a further connection um, with that records department is the topic of, uh, you know, understanding uh, if there are or are not uh, differences in the discipline process. Um, I'm sure they'd be interested to know that as well. Um, that's that's the initial thought that I have. Um, either of uh, the two commissioners here have either different thoughts um, or, you know, want to push back on this initial thought from me. That seems to be the logical next step forward, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I'm with this is Commissioner Sparks. I'm with you on that. I agree. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Crockett. Yeah, no, I was, I was just going to um, say I think it's a, a really good step to, to reach out from, from the branch. Sounds good. Um, and I know that the, uh, the disciplinary decisions, they're all in this PDF form. It looks like it would take um, time for someone to go through and kind of uh, pool together this information in uh, a more aggregated way and like put it into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but that might be something that would be worthwhile in trying to understand uh, are there, you know, uh, are we consistent with our discipline process? Or are we inconsistent with our discipline process? Um, and I'm trying to see if I can quickly get a a number just by like term searching on this website. Um, it looks like there are 55 records here. Um, so, I mean, that's not nothing. Um, I, I'm going to hold off on directing staff um, to start that work because it sounds like it's fairly tedious. Um, but if we could reflect in the meeting minutes, um, Madam Clerk, that uh, we would like to um, have a conversation with Mr. Band when he returns um, about how pragmatic it would be uh, for staff to uh, go through the disciplinary decisions um, manually. Um, just so that way we can have a conversation about feasibility of diving into the reports that we already have. Does that make sense for our record keeping? Ms. Yes, yes, Chair Fino, I'll, I'll make a note of that in the, in the minutes, thank you. Thank you for being our note keeper. Um, and you know what, uh, rather than telling you to do it, I'll, I'll write down that idea myself. So that way we have two notes that are saying the same thing. Um, I appreciate everyone's patience while I take notes. Um, okay, uh, any more um, discussion on item seven of our agenda? Seeing none. Um, before we adjourn, 
Um, I think that uh, we had a, a natural conversation point um, that was brought up, and I'm going to just tag it on to the end of business here. Um, the uh, idea uh, that we were talking about of limited staff resources, um, Mr. Sparks, um, and I, I know that this was a, uh, this has been a long uh, discussion that we have had here in this subcommittee and in the larger um, commission uh, in general. Uh, given that uh, our our chair, um, Abigail Sarah, uh, has resigned um, and you are now our, uh, you know, our, our senior officer as our vice chair. Um, I know that uh, something I have recently emailed you about, but I, I would recommend from this committee, and it might be something that we could put together in this subcommittee to go to the larger committee as a discussion item, but um, uh, talking about a, uh, a larger review of PCOC's um, charter, our role, our, our purpose, uh, and uh, whether or not we've been effective in that. Um, I know it hasn't come uh, from, you know, lack of trying from either our end or staff's end, um, but it seems like we are continuously fighting an uphill battle um, that we aren't either given the teeth that we need or the actual authority to oversee the way in which um, it, it seems as though we ought to have given our charter. Um, and it, I would recommend as, as chair of this subcommittee to you as, uh, you know, uh, uh, interim chair of our larger commission, um, that we have a conversation, um, as a full commission, uh, reviewing our, our charter, our purpose and reflecting on the effectiveness of that and how we can improve either internally or what we need to ask, ask for externally in order to become more uh, productive in this work. Uh, because, uh, you know, that it will not surprise many of you uh, who have been on this call or have been watching these videos that uh, it sounds like it's, it's a rerun. Um, and I, I don't want that to be the case. I want to make sure that we're, we're moving forward with our work because it is important and valuable uh, ways to contribute to our city. Um, but there's clearly there's something missing here. Um, and if it's not coming from within, it needs to come from, uh, you know, the bodies that give us this authority for what it is right now. Um, and again, it was not necessarily on the agenda, but it was naturally coming up in our conversation. So I, I figured it was worth this public time to have that conversation. Yeah, um, and very well stated uh, as usual, uh, Mr. Pino. Um, but you're right. I mean, it's to say it feels like a rerun is probably pretty accurate. It's easy to have that frustration, uh, but mm -hmm. I, I I think I've been feeling it personally a lot lately. You join, you have scant updates, um, get told a lot of things that we can't do, and then the meeting ends. And yeah. that's it's been like that for a for a while now. Um, and so it's hard to feel like you're contributing to something that's valued and that's effective, even though you know the work is so important and the, and the mission is so important. <clears throat> and it's a good um, thought about the um, the. Uh, the uh, I think you used the word charter because if I'm not mistaken in that language, like uh, a great example would be that since this commission was thought up, uh, you know, X number of years ago, quite a long time before any of us were on it. Um, we're supposed to be contributing to the police chief's annual review, um, and that's that's black and white. It's right in there that we're supposed to have a voice, or at least offer an opinion, and that's never happened. We've never been asked for one. I think we ask to come to the table, and sometimes we offer that opinion but it never seems to land anywhere. Um, and that's, uh, it's almost like a case in point, right? It's not up for debate, it's black and white. That's something we're supposed to be involved in and it's not happening, it's never happened. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, no no formal 
uh, motion from me. I, I would love to hear Commissioner Crockett's um, thoughts on this, but um, at the end of this, I'll, I'll just give an informal ask because you're the person who's going to set the agenda um, for our next meeting as a as an entire commission. Mr. Crockett, any thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that would be a it, it would be a really great 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 step is to actually like have a conversation to uh or i guess an audit to see you know where we're at what effect we have made and um is it you know answering that question is it something of you know our structure or is it you know uh like kind of said the powers that be um or, or the the people who structured the pcoc um is that something to where we you know, go to them to um to 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 give us to give us some more to, to help us be in a better position to to actually get some stuff done um instead of uh having the halts that we always are consistently getting and uh the data stoppage and um and everything so i think i think at the at the minimum for sure we should for sure reevaluate um, to to really look and, and see what effect we've made and and what can be what can really be different or what we should specifically address so that we can be a lot more effective. Thank you. Well said. Um, so yeah, uh, just parting. Parting words for our vice chair. Um, if uh, I would love to see on our agenda um, either a review of the ordinance, so that way we can all take a look at it as a committee. Um, and you know, on top of that, uh, either whether that's reviving the ordinance committee, which exists within our structure, or saying you know the entire commission is going to take on the duties of the ordinance committee and start talking about what's working what's not working um i think i think now's the time that we need to we need to start doing that otherwise you know it's uh it it doesn't seem like uh we're we're making the type of uh headway that we want to see and i know sometimes this process is slow but there's a difference between slow and stalled you know yeah I think you're right. Um, <clears throat> so our next uh, full commission meeting, I believe, is on April 12th. Um, so we normally work with with uh, Lisa Brock from the clerk's office mm -hmm. on setting the agenda. I have already sent her um, a draft agenda, but she I don't think she uh, she's out um, she's until out, yeah. a certain date. Um, I will reach out to her and see if we can shoehorn this into the draft agenda. Uh, the worst case scenario is just that uh the ones and zeros don't match up and she publishes the the agenda as it is and then when we start our meeting we just uh amend it but yeah. i'll make sure this is on there either through an amendment or i'll um update the uh the draft that i send her and if you need someone to make that motion when it comes time just feel free to let me know and i'd be happy to do it if you need someone who's not moderating to make that amendment yeah that sounds good um, and it'll probably be somewhere near somewhere near the top because I think it's first order of business that we have to uh, figure out our leadership, such as it is. Even though our our commission is so greatly reduced, we still need chairs and vice chairs. And then we'll um, oh, probably right after that, I suppose we'll we'll want to bring up this topic. Okay. All right. Um, any further items to discuss um, before we end business here today? Right. Seeing none, uh, we've concluded all items on our agenda for this meeting. Um, and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you for commissioners, staff, and members of the public who joined us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. See ya.